Buckle up, sports fanatics. This is the Sports Chasers Podcast, your HQ for in-depth sports talk. Join host Kevin L. Warren and crew as they dissect the hottest stories, ignite debates, and bring you closer to the action. From locker room whispers to expert takes, we cover it all. It's game time, so strap in and grab a drink. The Sports Chasers Podcast starts right now. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's happening, everybody? It's another edition of the Sports Chasers Podcast coming to you live on a Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Well, we're live, but, you know, um, we're not live on YouTube or anything like that. But uh, we're recording Sunday morning. Uh, Greetings and salutations in the words of Mike Mills. Glad to be with you. Hey, we're going to talk a little bit about hockey tonight. My New York Rangers are done for. They got eliminated last night by the... Florida Panthers, four games to two. A um, little saddened. I got on all black. Uh, and Dan is here tonight, uh, this morning, to uh, absolutely rub salt into the wounds. So, but D-Dubs is joining us with Slinging All. D-Dubs, what's up? How are you this morning, bro? How are you? Good morning. What's up? What's up? Uh, Sports Chasers, and we here again. Yes, it's a black Sunday. <laughs> black Sunday. And uh, and Dan's going to be here to remind us of... Oh yeah. well, he's, he's he's here. He's got uh, his damn Florida Panthers shirt on that uh, he bought in 1993 or whatever year that they came yeah, in. 96. <laughs> 96. <laughs> damn, what's up, man? Good morning, bro. How hey, are man. you? Good morning, gentlemen, dearly beloved brothers yes. and sisters. We're here to celebrate <laughs> the life that was the 2023-24 season for the New York Rangers. Yeah, man. Yo, man. Let me tell you something. It was a hell of a run. Uh, you know they don't have nothing to. No, nope. the heads down about absolutely not. Um, Florida was just that they was good, they was just better than us and very, very, uh, how, how you say it, uh, more physical, I think. And I could be wrong, I'm gonna let Dan handle that, but that's what I seen just more aggressive. And I don't know what happened to our aggressiveness. We got aggressive when we had uh, uh, what, what was it, six on six, <laughs> six off, um, five. When we pulled the goalie in, yeah, we got aggressive then. But, uh, yep. you know, other than that. I, I got plenty of questions for Dan. Uh, like, you know, um, some of the Rangers pulled a disappearing act. They this did. series. This series. I, I'm going to give it to the hockey dude. Hockey dude, take it away, bro. Well, <clears throat> like you guys were talking about, we had a great series. You know, it ended in six. But, you know, if you go back and, you know, look – at each game, you know, from game one to game six, <laughs> every game, but uh, you know, every game was a one goal game. Yep. We had one, two, three, three overtime, uh, overtime games out of the six. So, you know, like we talked about this a few days ago, texting back and forth, Kev, you know, it's like, you know, this could have been 4 0 either right. way. You know, it's just, you know, the first couple went, you know, the Rangers way in overtime. And then, you know, the last one, I think it was that, that Florida Reinhardt scored in overtime to, you know, get them back to Florida with the chance of the clinch. But, you know, overall, great series. And I like, I, like I told you guys, you know, this might be better than the finals, depending on what matchup we get. Mm-hmm. And. You know, there, there's, for me, there's, there's a few things that happen with the Rangers that kind of sealed their demise. And as you alluded to, Kevin, uh, some people disappeared. I mean, President's Cup winning team, you know, absolutely stormrolled Carolina. Didn't have to play really a first round opponent in the Capitals, you know. They had, you know, once they got past uh, Carolina, you know, it was very, a real good chance they could make it back, you know, for the first time since 94. But for me, it's just, if you watch these games, you know, the only reason why you needed Zibanejad was on the ice is because you could see his hair flowing. <laughs> it, you know, it wasn't because wasn't he had the puck or, you know, or he was scoring goals like Car- or, um Florida did a, an awesome job of literally they shut down Sabenajab, 
Crier. Um, I'm trying to think who else. The, like um, the Cap- Lafayette. Uh, yeah, no, Lafayette. See, well, he, the- he didn't do his shots on goal last night. He, I don't think he didn't get nothing until that was just yesterday's game. But guys, yeah, yeah. Overall, like he had four goals in the series. Yeah, yeah. You know, and Goodrow's had three. Mm-hmm. How many does Benajev have? Yeah, he's. How many Panarin have? Right. How many Crager have? It's missing in action. Uh, I'll tell you, Panarin had one, Carter had one, Zabenajev had zero. It's and not, it's not going to be good enough. And Panarin's goal were the last two games. And it was when they were down 2 nothing last night. And then Panarin scored to make it 2 1. And then the game prior, Kreider scored when they were down. So, like, it, yeah. They scored an important goal, but they fell short. But you know, it's a little too, little too little late, so to speak. Where you know, Florida, Florida did an awesome job of like literally just shutting them down. And the second thing I think, really for the Rangers, you know, where was their power play? I mean, non-existent, non-existent bro. <clears throat> that kind of goes hand in hand with, you know, Zabinajev, Kreider. You know, these are all the guys, Panarin, these are the guys that play the power play. They so, want one for 15 in this series. I think they scored that power play in game one. And after that, they was right. non existent, bro. But, like, they got, like, here's the thing is, like, power plays of the series, I think uh, Rangers one for 15, but they did have two shorthanded goals. Florida, they were five and nineteen. So you know that's a four goal difference. You know, of course, they gave up two shorties, but not only that, Dan, but it was supposed to be the opposite, right? The Rangers were one of the leading leagues. I, I, I don't, I, I don't have it in front of me, where they was leading the lead in the power play, right? And it kind of like switched, like how you just said, how the Panthers pretty much. They was, you know, what you say, five of 16 on the power play to the series? Five of 19. Five of 19, excuse me. And Rangers did diddly squat nothing on the power play. And shows. And, I mean, if you look at the series also, like, what Florida did, you know, to the Rangers as a whole offensively, the Rangers only scored 12 goals in six games. Yep. And they had five. In game was game four. Mm-hmm. So every game they scored one or two, and that was it. Game three, they had five goals. Yeah. So, and every, and every other game was a two, one, three, two. Yep. Pretty much. That's it. And, you know, they got a lot of good guys on this team. I mean, Trocek, he had five points. Fox, I think he had three. You know, Panarin overall had four points. Goudreau had three. E- even uh, the orange cone on the fence, Truba, had three three <laughs> points. And in Lafnier, he had four goals. I mean, he was your top goal scorer in this series. Listen, um, Shesterkin, you got to give him credit, too. Um, oh, he played phenomenal. I mean, you can't ask. It's, it's almost like a pitcher, right, in baseball. You know, he lets up. His his earn run average is like a one point three, and it, but his team scores one point two game uh, runs per game. This is kind of how much almost like how this is with Shostakovich. It's gonna no be hard offense, to get it done if you can't no score. Generated. Dan yeah. just alluded to like sixteen. Um, how many goals? Sixteen goals scoring the whole. Yeah, Florida um, scored sixteen, and the Rangers had twelve. Twelve. It's gonna be hard to be. It's gonna be very. You're gonna be very hard pressed to beat a team. Especially as great as Florida. Florida is a really, really, really good, great team. They went to the Cup Finals last year. Fell short against um, Vegas, Vegas. and uh, I, I think they have a really good chance now that they got past the Rangers to either beat Edmonton or Dallas. But go ahead, Dan. You the hockey dude. But uh, you know, special teams I think played a big part in this series, and, and like we were just talking about. You know, goaltending on both sides of the ice was phenomenal. Yes. And, you know. Shout out to Sergei Bravosky, man. That dude is. Bobby. <sighs> Bobby's nice. Bobby's nice, too. 
No, he. I think he's better than. Shaz- I mean, it's like one A and then one point A A. They they're both. Go ahead, Dan. But uh, I think Shesterkin, um, he played he played awesome, but I think he had to provide more uh, more of the the stellar or highlight type um, saves because like Florida pressed you know the Rangers for the most of the series. There's a couple times where the Rangers took the play to them, you know, throughout the series and throughout the different games. But like some of the great A shots that, that Florida had and he robbed them, you know, and he, and like, basically he kept them in this series, mm-hmm. you know, and, and Bob, he played great too. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, that's why I say like just the way the goaltending was playing, and the the caliber of players you have on both teams, uh, that's why I was uh, you know kind of bummed that this series it went six games, you know, not seven, because this time of the year we're running out of hockey. <laughs> so <laughs> when teams get eliminated, it's not great. But you know, getting close to the prize, getting close to the end. Yes, it, it, it really like, you know, the the Florida players, you know, their stars, like, you know. Bennett had four goals. For Hagee had three goals. You know, Reinhardt had three goals. You know, to Chuck, he didn't he had one goal, but he had four assists. You know, there wasn't a you know a ton of you know points in this in, in this series because of the, how well the game was being played. But you know, Bennett had six points. Verhage had six points. You know, the, the guys that they expect to show up and carry their team, they did. Whereas, you know. Some of the, you know, like we talked about, you know, the Rangers stars kind of disappeared. Like they brought Heedle back into the series. I don't know that he even got a point in this series, you know, and they, they only played Rempe, you know, that's the other big thing was like, well, you know, Rempe played less than four minutes or three minutes or whatever it was. Yeah. If you ever watched, you know, eighties hockey, you know, there was that guy that was a fixture on the end of the bench. Yeah, yeah. You know, he was basically a hired doorman. He just opened the doors for everybody else. But as soon as somebody got a cheap shot, <laughs> he was he was on the ice, and that's you know that happens. You know, this to today's game. You know, you go back to the trash can, Tom Wilson. You know, that would be him, but he can actually play the game. You know, he's dirty. You know, <laughs> but. You know, he could skate, he could score, and that's what, the, you know, the enforcer has kind of become in the league where, you know, Rempe hasn't really got that opportunity. And, like, you know, Lavalette, you know, that's the thing. If you're not going to play him, you might as well put somebody else in, mm-hmm. you know, and let, let them play. But I think if you give Rempe the chance, the kid's smart enough. He's not going to put himself in a position where he hurts the team. Correct. Because if you look at the one game, I want to say it was in was it MSG or in Florida, but the Rangers have won the game, and you know how they all file out and go to congratulate their goalie. And I want to say it was possibly to Chuck and one other player. You know, one Rev. slapped, one slashed him, and the other one was trying to get to him in the linesman. That was the end of the um, was that game four, I think. It might have been, but it, you know, and he just skated away from it, you know. So it's like, you know, if you're not gonna play him, yeah, put him in the press box. But you know, that was one of your guys that you know was a four checker and a big hitter, and that's that's the biggest thing with Florida. They don't they they don't they don't blow you up, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a spectacular hit, but they continually hit you all game long. All game long. And I, I bet if you go back and you look at the goal differential in the third period of these games, or I guess overtime, yeah, you know, the Rangers won two in overtime. But for the most part, Florida was outscoring them late in games. Yeah. Like I said, man, like I was, at, you know, I'm not the expert, man, but what I seen last, it just seems like you said they hit on every, seemed like every time they, they was hitting them. And like on return, I didn't see that in return for the Rangers doing that to Florida. Now I could be wrong. Did you sense that as well, or 
Yeah, it's yeah, it's certain people not being for the, for the Rangers, Rangers, you know, would hit, and then there's certain ones that would do the flyby. Yeah, you know, they'd pressure them until they got rid of the puck, and instead of putting them in the glass, they keep skating. Hmm. Where Florida, uh, that, uh, apparently, that's a no go. <laughs> you had yeah. the puck and you got rid of it, you still get hit. Yeah, you know, and it paid off for them. Big time. And they're they're going to be very hard to beat with the way that they play. I mean, think of it this way. They're going to play Dallas or they're going to play Edmonton. And we all know what kind of star players that both of these teams have. Correct. But they just literally shut down the Rangers' best players. Mm. Now, the, you know, you could argue that, you know, Zibanejad, you know, is, is in the same, you know, realm as Hyman and stuff, but, you know, McDavid and Drysaddle, they're a little bit above everybody else, but they, they show that they can do it. McDavid's a bad dude. And it, yeah. it, it, we'll talk about that series yes. once we finish up with this, because that, you know, what they're doing is crazy. But well, like, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was about, I'm going to let you finish the thought with just um, real quick with that. You get with the Rangers end of the season, then I know it's you know it's so early, but then you face big questions with the guys, off season, restricted free agents, expiring contract and deals like that. Uh, what you think? Uh, they got what's that? Capo Caco, Ryan Ling Lindgren, and Braden Snyder, all of restricted free agents. Uh, so you know that's a good point, D. Changes will be be made, and it's hard. You know, you know it sucks, man, because these are the guys that you got here. You got here with, and you made a little special magical run, and now it comes to an end, and then you got to try to figure out who's who, where, what line goes where, things like that. What do you think about the Rangers? Well, two of those guys are defensemen, mm -hmm. Langren and Schneider. And, and I thought they played well, you know, throughout the entire playoffs. Okay. And they played, they played well in, in, you know, this series also, where Capco, like, I don't, I don't think he had a point in this series. Yeah, you know, and once once in a blue moon during this series, like I think last night he had a nice play in front of the net where he, he out battled the guy and got a shot on goal. Right. But I mean, he didn't score any this whole series. Nope. So I don't know, man. Like to me, you know, this is going to be an unpopular opinion, but. Uh oh. Well, uh -oh. That's, no cool. that's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying, I, I, know, I know Truba's the captain, right? Truba is. is. Yeah, but, he's old, what, he's $8 but, million dollar salary cap on him. It's yeah. Like, for the next yeah, two seasons I, for the Rangers. Go ahead. Who's the heart? Yeah, he might be the heart and soul of that team, but who else is? Trocek. Yeah. Yep. I, I would give him the C and I would move on from Truba. Truba. And get it gets another defenseman. I mean, look, Florida didn't want him getting suspended, and they didn't want him, you know, not to play in games because throughout this series they targeted him, they yeah. dumped it to his corner, they wanted him to have the puck because they knew he could, he was going to turn it over. And it, you know, in the amount of time, that, you know, I think it was game one or two, or maybe even three, but. He spent like he went three trips to the penalty box in the same game. It might have been the the one game, the, the game was it game three? It was either game three or four because I think they scored a couple power play goals off of his mm -hmm. penalties. But you know, we saw you know what his expertise is in the league: forearm shivers and you know chicken wings when he's you know going head first into the boards. You know, trying to kill a player, like they need someone who can actually play defense. Hmm. Yeah, I, I get it. That he was like the one guy on the team besides Rempe that could compete physically. You know, in the hits department. I'm I'm trying I'm trying to think. Just hold your thought real quick. Uh, what you said about uh, Trocheck and Truba. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything in sports where the captain. The C was ripped off your chest. So well, I don't want to say ripped. But... Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I mean, they just give it to somebody else because 
you know, usually the captain, he's, you know, you think about, you know, Derek Jeter, you think of, I think uh, uh, Aaron Judge is the captain of the, I don't think, I know he's a, he's a captain the Yankees. of the Yankees now. I never heard where we just ripped the C off the chest of the the incumbent cap, captain. Um, but I hear you, and I feel you as a Ranger fan. Some Ranger fans probably, when they hear this in the sound of our voices, uh, they're going to probably disagree, and that's fine. That's okay. That's but we have to look at what has transpired during this series. I think this – And how do we get better? Because, you know, at the end of the day, that's what it's about. You got to get over this hump, and you got a good, solid foundation. Two seasons in a row, right? Right. So – and this is hard as, as Dan – Dan's the expert, the resident expert. This is hard to get back to – you play a lot of hockey. And he said that about the Florida Panthers, excuse me, about Tampa Bay Tampa Lightning Bay. Mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. And he says it, 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 it wears on you, it wears on you, it wears on you, trying to get back. It's like one of the hardest things in sports, I would say, besides football, to try to get back to the to Vince Lombardi's trophy and Lloyd Stanley's cup. Go ahead. And this, oh, hold on. There. And this is, like I said, this is – this is past the players now. This is next level. This is, goes to general managers, management. You know, these guys got to make the decisions to put certain guys together, figure this out because you're right here. You're knocking at, at heaven's door and you can't get in. So they got to figure that out. Go ahead, Dan. No, I was just going to say, uh, what's his salary cap hit? Is it worth the play you're getting from said player. I mean, it doesn't matter what player it is. Like we can talk about Capco too, you know, being invisible in, in, in the playoffs. And it's like, do you spend that money knowing what type of play you're going to get? And in the playoffs, what type of player they are? Because, mm -hmm. you know, some guys don't play that great during the regular season, you know, whether it be chemistry, line mates, whatever. Mm. But, you know, or, you know, they're a veteran player where they're kind of pacing themselves because they know the playoffs are coming. And then when the playoff comes, you're like, wow. You know, like um, Jason Williams that played for um, L.A., the Kings, and Carolina. And you have a they, they call him Mr. Game 7. Because in the playoffs, <laughs> that, that, that dude scores. You know, he might not light it up in the regular season, but the compete level – goes way up because that's what they're playing for that's what they want to win you know everybody wants to get their name on the cup so you know there's players play different in the playoffs you see them play a lot harder and they may you know it, it's one of those things like i know i give the maple leafs platina a bunch of shit, but if you watch them in the playoffs the last couple of years and i know i said it about needlander you could tell, and even Marner this year didn't really do shit. But, like, I know there was an instance where Nylander was coming down the boards, dumped the puck into the corner, instead of going and forcing and hitting the guy, the defenseman, for the puck, he just kind of did a flyby. And it's like, dude, this isn't the regular season. <laughs> if you dump that puck in, you got to go get it. you got to force the guy. you got to hit the guy. And if that's not your nature – you're not going to, you know, succeed in the playoffs. You, you have to have that will and determination that I want that puck. I'm going to go get it and go battle for it. And I think, you know, Marner was kind of like that this year. Just, you know, didn't seem like he wanted to be on the ice. And that's like with the Panarin thing. He, you know, small guy, you know, great skill, but he's not a guy that's going to, you know, go run you into the boards for the puck. And, you know, that if you look at Florida's team, there isn't a guy on that team that doesn't hit. They, they've they all bought into, the, you know, the mantra of finish your check. Mm -hmm. Wear them down. I mean, they all hit. Is that is that from uh, <laughs> Paul Maurice? Is that the coach's uh, coach philosophy? Is that well, I'm, I'm sure it, that he wants them heavy on the four check and, and he wants them finishing checks. But, you know, I think the players kind of took that next level where, yeah, we're hitting everybody. I think they I think they absolutely have bought it to uh, Coach Maurice's um, 
style of play. Like Alexander Barkov was a pain in the ass for the Rangers the whole series. The whole series. What's my man that just got traded or he went, he left the Rangers. He was with the Rangers last year. Uh, what was it, Tarasenko? Yeah, and he scored the game winner. <laughs> <laughs> really, Dan? Game, game, game clinching. Yeah, he went to Ottawa and then Florida picked him up. And then Florida picked him up, correct. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I just think uh, this, uh, uh, and we'll focus. Let's focus on Florida a little bit, man, because Florida did everything right. Like you said, I told you in the beginning of game one, they finished every check. I said, boy, Florida's about to be a problem for the Rangers. And kudos to them, kudos to Coach Paul Maurice for their style of play. This is like yeah, I man. said, this is their second year in a row. They're going back to the Cup Finals, man. They did everything. They did everything that they needed to do to win it. And they was more to me. They was more physical with the Rangers. Yeah. So go ahead, Dan. No, I, I just think yeah, you know, they, they were they were more physical and 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 it was a tactic almost to like we're gonna hit you, we're gonna hit you. It may not work all much, you know. Game one, game two, right? We get game five, game six, game seven. People are gonna be tired. People are gonna be you know banged up, and it, it's gonna wear on them. And it, and it, you know, like I said, if you look at the third period goals. It seems like Florida had had a bunch of them, and you know, the way that they play, and the way that they all play, it, you know, it's something that you know the coach, you know, probably you know, like, hey, finish checks, you know, let, let, let's you know, be heavy on the four check, and then they just said, yeah, we're going to take that <laughs> to the next level. <laughs> it, 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 we're definitely going to do that. And, you know, they had success with that last year. I mean, you know, they weren't even supposed to be in the playoffs last year. And, you know, they squeaked in at the end, and they did all the damage. I, I mean, uh, the, they beat Boston, I think. I beat Toronto. Yep. And, yeah. So, like, this, uh, like we were talking, I was talking to you, Kevin, before we started this. I think this is, like, the first year, first time since, like, 09, 08, 09, that the team has gone back to back finals, you know, the team that lost. Yep. And, and, you know, that was, you know, that was, you know, the Penguins and the Detroit Red Wings. They, you know, first year of Detroit won, second year of Penguins won. So, you know, it's looking good for Florida. They lost the first one. Now it's their turn to win, so to speak. Right. But yeah, like, you know, you look at, I just looked down at like the stats, like, man, they just, they only scored 12 goals in six games. I mean, granted, I get it. There's not, you know, a ton of scoring in the playoffs. But usually there's that one game, you know, like the 5-4 game, that's overtime game. That was really close. Usually there's at least like one game where the other team kind of gets a, you know, a, a bigger lead, like a 5-2 lead or whatever, and ends up being 5-3 or whatever because the other team pulls their goalie and gets one, you know, whatever. But it was just like, man, all these 3-2, you know, Two one games. And it's like, you know, really like Barboski had an assist. He had as many assists as Miller did, Roslovic, Kreider. He had more than Grudro. Grudro didn't. Yeah. Or Lafaniere. They he he didn't have one either. So I mean, the, the, the goaltender for the other team, you know, has more assists than some of the guys on your team. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's like that's a just watching these games, and I'm like, okay, you know, you you. Last year, you know, Florida bullied everybody. This year, everybody knew it was coming, you know, and it was like the Rangers just couldn't figure out how how to adapt or, you know, change. Because, like, so, you know, I saw – I was watching the, the in-between period stuff. And, you know, if you're getting a heavy forecheck on you, you know, one of the ways you can alleviate that, you know, because – I I believe it was Coach Cooper who was on the panel on TNT. You know, he's like, hey, you know, there's high flips out to center ice. You know, you get your guy to, you know, one, you pull the defenseman, so you stretch the defense because they got to guard you because, you know, the puck's up in the air. They got to keep an eye on you. And then, you know, it it's breaks out, you know, out of the zone, alleviates that pressure. And it's like they really didn't adapt or change. They played the same way. <laughs> almost, almost all the games. As you look at the New York Post um, back page article, 
I mean, the back page says, not this year. Rangers couldn't match Panthers' toughness. And, and as 30-year Stanley Cup drought continues. Jesus. 30 years. Man. I mean, wow. we, I mean, we could When was it before that? 1940. Yeah. 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 We, we, we went to the Cup Finals against uh, L.A. Uh, was that 2016? 2015, 2015 I think. 2015. Uh, L.A. was just a better team with yeah, Jonathan yeah. Quick and all that stuff. Um, they were very good in that <laughs> that time period, like this couple yeah. of years. That's when Dustin Brown and them, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they won two or three in a couple years. All right, Dan. So uh, Dallas and Edmonton is does Edmonton close out tonight? Like I said, Connor McDavid is a bad dude, bro. He's he's a bad dude on that hockey on that ice. Go ahead. Hey, like we talked about this, I think the last Thursday I was on or whatever, and I was like, you know, Edmonton's going to go how their goaltending goes. And yeah, that that that's kind of true. But if you got Drysaddle, Hyman, and McDavid on your team, yeah, you give up the first two in the first two minutes, three minutes. Nah, eh, that's all right. We'll just outscore you. Like mm. they should have. Dallas should have won. Um, it was a game four. Mm -hmm. And they they were up two nothing. And lost 5-2. And I looked at it. If you look up. Um, so in the playoffs. They have um, the leading the leading points getters. Take a wild guess what team has a top four. <laughs> you got McDavid with 29. Dreisaitl with 27. Bouchard, the defenseman, has 25. Right. And uh, right. Ted Nugent Hopkins got 20. Damn, that's crazy. That's and really that, crazy. Yeah, and that's in 17 games. Wow. Now, Trocek is right slotted in there with Hopkins, Nugent Hopkins, with 20. Then the next three are Florida, Tchuk, Verhage, and Barkov. Chuck has 19. Verhage and Barkov got 17, and that's in 17 games. So they played the same amount of games as the Oilers have in the playoffs so far. And Mc, uh, Dry Settle has 10 more points, and McDavid has 12. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they got better, Edmonton did, you know, with the addition of Hyman. And then, you know, Bouchard has come along and, and played really well. Right. But, it's almost one of those things where like they can almost outscore the mistakes that they make. That's you know good. what I mean? That's a good point. Yeah. That's you good. Know, Cause like we were talking with the Rangers series, you know, all the games were low scoring and th these are kind of similar. Uh, Edmonton won. What was it? Game one, three, two game two, Dallas won three, one game three, Dallas won five, three, Game four, Edmonton 5-2, and then 3-1 the last game. So, but it's it's amazing that, like, they can just <laughs> outscore, you know, because Ottinger is a top-notch goalie. Like, he, he's up there with Igor and uh, Barboski. Right. But, you know, he's given up five against them. And it's just, it's just, you can't give them the power play. They are just so good on the power play. And it, like, and that's the other thing with kind of like with them, you know, if they take a penalty, they put the penalty killers out there. You know, McDavid right. and Santa will play a little bit of the PK. But what, what their coach has figured out is, all right, if we kill this or we get late in the, in the penalty kill, you know, they put Dreisaitl and McDavid together. So they're they're coming out, you know, and playing against, you know, third-line guys. Right. Or fourth-line guys, you know, or whatever, because they just put all their, you know, top players playing the power play. So it's, you know, a way that they can come back, you know, and shift the momentum quickly after, you know, the power play, you know. 
but it, it'll be interesting because like Dallas got some good players, you know, some really good players. Like that that Wyatt Johnson kid, he's young. He's been playing out of his mind. He's been playing great. And, you know, you know Jason Robertson's another young kid. It's really good. You know, Mason Marchman. Right. He's been, you know, not much, you know, a ton of scoring, but he's very physical. Mm -hmm. But it's just, yeah, and they got Ben and Sagan. Then down off, and it's just and they got hey, he's gonna. And I'm trying to think of the one defenseman that they have that's out though. What was his name? Who you play? You talking about uh, Edmonton? Uh, Hockenpah. Yanni Hockenpah. What a name! <laughs> yeah, you know, but you know they got they got a good you know good back end with Hayes Haskinen, Lundell, Harley, uh, Ryan Suter. Chris Tanev and Petrovic, but they they would definitely like to have Hawk and Paul back to deal with the the forwards for Edmonton. It'd be interesting to see because like what what would make a better final for you to to watch? Who like we know Florida's playing. Who I I probably would prefer Edmonton. I don't like these conversations because. Uh, I know it's about, you know, what's sexy and all that stuff, but they all play in the same league. And I, I don't particularly care for this. But if I had a preference, it would probably be Edmonton and Florida. I think that would make for uh, really good hockey if you're a hockey um, fan. My thing is with these conversations, and you guys might agree with me, you might not agree with me. If you're a hockey fan, if you're a baseball fan, I, li- I hear a lot of people crying, oh, my God, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't like Boston. And I didn't, I, I, the Mavs, I, I, you know, I'm talking about basketball. You know, man, if you're a basketball guy, you're going to watch it, right? The World, yeah, Series, right. World Series last year, right? Arizona and um, I forgot who won um, already. Uh, uh, it'll come to my mind. Texas. Arizona and Texas. Texas, the Texas Rangers. Oh, man, how, how, could, how could Major League Baseball do this? Yo, man, if you are a baseball fan, you'll watch – the World Series, you'll watch the NBA Finals, you'll watch the Lord Stanley Cup. Uh, yeah, I'm with you on that one, man. It doesn't matter. It's it's the game. It's the, they still play the game, right? It's it's, 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 a, it's a narrative taken by the legacy mainstream. media, mainstream yeah. media, where they're trying to get something, and it, it, to me, it's just a disrespect to the teams involved. And um, play, yeah, 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 team players. Yeah, I'm gonna answer your question. I think I did. All right, I said, yeah, Edmonton, but if it's the Stars. I'm, so I'm be it. watch because yeah. it's it's hockey, and I know you love hockey. You're gonna watch it. You're gonna be glued to your TV every night, and 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 watching it. But all this this it's the sexy pick. It's the it's the sexy matchup and stuff like that. That it's all entertainments and sports and WWE matchups and all that stuff. And I'm quite to be honest, it's sick of it. I didn't mean for you to feel my trigger, Dan, but um. <laughs> And guess what? Because if the Dallas Stars win two games, they deserve to be there. They if they win it. the next two games, they deserve to be there. Yep. Period. They yes. Would, would I rather would I rather see Conor Mc, uh, McDavid yeah. and, and get in there and do this thing? Sure. He, yeah. he is a he's a great talent. Yeah. But if, if he gets knocked out by the Stars, yeah, and they didn't they didn't have the opportunity to close out. The yeah. Last two games. Now listen, the Dallas Stars were, are, were the best team in the Western Conference. Mm-hmm. Let's not let's not let's not try to sh- shit on them. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, th- that's what I'm saying. They're number one in the conference for a reason. So I expect a really good game tonight. I expect I actually expect this to go seven games. This there'll be a game seven on on Tuesday. I'll get Dan's reaction to that. Um, they're playing. I think uh, their game is in Edmonton tonight at eight o'clock on o'clock. on TNT. Is it on TNT? I hope it's on TNT. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> I just had it up. I don't. Know. I can't remember. <laughs> Because it definitely was on ABC ESPN I, last night. Oh my God, I can't. Yeah, I can't. <coughs> yeah. Hey, hey, TNT, do us a favor. Can you buy the rights to hockey all the time, please? Uh, we implore you. We beg you. I I don't like ESPN's coverage because they don't cover you on on Sports Center. But yeah. but you know what? We're here. To, we're not. Whatever. Dan, go ahead. I'm sorry. I ain't mean. Well, yeah. no, I, I'm just curious. Yeah. Like who, who you like. Because for me, I don't care which team it is. Because I got different okay. reasons. 
See? Because on one hand, I want to see Edmonton play Florida. I want to see if Florida can do the same thing that the dry settle and McDavid and Hyman that they did to the Rangers. I right? think it's going to be tough though. Uh, it, it's definitely going to be tough. Yes. But absolutely. I think they can do it. Mm-hmm. And I, I still think that will go a seven game series. But, and, and as long as Florida doesn't give up power plays to them, that's the case. On the other hand, I really want to see Dallas play them because you got the the big physical guys on Dallas too. You know, Jamie Ben's not going to shy away from the chuck. Nope, not, it, at all. It, not at all. And I and I think that that would be just like a rock and sock em type of um, finals, like where it would just the hits would be in the sixties per team each night, mm. and and then you you still have the skill and the grace that you know of these teams being able to score. So like, it doesn't matter to me who wins out of the West. It really right. does. You know, but I, I, I will, I will take my foot back out of my mouth because I can remember earlier this year, I was like, you know, Dallas, yes, they are the best team in the West. Why are they the best team in the West? Because Edmonton shit the bed for the first two months of the season. <laughs> And they were, they were, they were yeah. bottom of the bottom. They sure was. I remember. I like, they, they ripped off 16 wins. I remember that, that and Dan, during the, during the season. I was like, man, yeah. this is awful. Why are they all to this bad stuff? And then, and then all of a sudden, they caught fire. They, yeah. They, yeah. They, so why? They, they canned the coach. Oh, okay. Remember? They, remember they canned the coach? Yep. And they got a new voice in there. And now it was like, well, they can't fire two coaches back to back. So, if we still suck, it's going to be on us. Right. <laughs> right, right. right. You, you know, it's just accountability. It's like, okay, they did because, you know, you got 22 guys sitting on the bench and then you got the, your, you know, coaches in behind you. So it's easier to fire a coach than, than to try to move 100%, 100%. all the, pl- any of the players. So, you know, whether, you know, dude wasn't a bad coach. It just, it wasn't clicking and then they weren't getting better. And, and he, that's, you know, the logical move is to change the coach because that's the easiest way to get their attention. Because now they know, you know, if we still, you know, are playing the way, then obviously it's a team thing. Then we're going to start moving players and nobody want, you know, you don't want to be traded. And then, no. boom, what happens? They catch fire. They damn near made it all the way back to, you know, one of the top teams in the league. You know, and, and if they played at 500, at the beginning of the season, they probably would have been the president's tick cup team. Yep. You know, they were just woeful at the beginning of the season. So I give them credit for, you know, I remember that. Yeah. Turn, turn out, Cause I was like, dude, if they keep yeah. this up, they're not going to make it. Yeah. And it's, they you know, it up. they totally. it up in the middle. And, and they just want bananas. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's why I said it doesn't matter which team they play. Florida, I think there's their entertainment value. You know, regardless of team, it may be a different style of game that's played depending on who they play. Right. But, you know, Florida's going to do the same thing. And, you know, there are going to be a lot of blue sh- blue shirts getting hit into the, into the Windex there <laughs> if it's Edmonton. And it's vice versa if it's Dallas. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, do you see Florida winning it all regardless? Uh, man. That, that, like I said, I look back to 2008, 2009, because, you know, I, I was, you know, pissed off that we lost in 08. And then, you know, we learned what we needed to do to get over the hump the next year. And I think Florida is kind of in that, that same mindset of like, okay, we weren't supposed to be here last year, but we got there and we fell short. And here's the biggest thing. When they went to the finals last year, they were decimated, like injury wise. I think Chuck had his like separated it like a spleen or whatever the sternum. I think he sternum, broke yeah. a sternum, whatever. But like every, I think Ekblad had a wrist or a leg injury. Like they were all completely banged up. And like it wasn't, you know, so called the, t- the team that they were. But now I think, especially, you know, if they, Dallas wins tonight and pushes this other one to Tuesday. That's more time for them to get, you know, rested. 
but I think they're way healthier than they were last year. So like all their star players, you know, everybody's got something going on now, you know, banged up, bruised, you know, from taking their shot block or whatever. But on the whole, they are, I think, better off health-wise than they were last year. So I think uh, they can absolutely do it because they got a stellar goaltender mm-hmm. and, and they're just going to pound you into submission into the glass the entire game. Mm. It may point. take them seven games, but yeah, I think none of us. That's a good point. That's a good point. Anything else, Dan, or hockey? I mean, I know this is supposed to be the hockey segment, but D-Dubs wanted to talk to some, something real quick. Anything yeah, we got to talk to them. Well, I was just going to say um, the, you, crack, <laughs> the, the, the Kraken, um, I believe they hired Dan Bla- Bausma. Yes. He, used to, he used to be the coach for the Penguins. Um, and I believe he's their minor league affiliate coach and they're in the conference finals right now, but I did also see where they may have the first female coach behind the bench that, um, I think it, I think it was, I believe her name is Jessica Campbell. Okay. And she, she was how fitting it was it. I want to say it's, uh, that PWL, the women's league. Right, I believe she's the coach of um, Montreal. All right, which Minnesota beat Boston three games to two to win the first. That's the inaugural year, right? The inaugural year of the league, because I think um, was it Minnesota might have been down in the series and came back to beat them, but they were showing those games on YouTube, which I was I was shocked. Like, you know, the game, you know, the actual like live game was on YouTube. You could just mm. pull because I said, I said, Is this game live? I'm like, oh, hell, this is this finals. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Let me check this out. <laughs> but that'd be, I mean, that'd, that'd be really cool because it, it, at the end of the day, it's X and O's. And yeah, at the end of the day, yeah. And like, it, it, you know, it. And they can make it work. Times. Yeah. Mm. You never know. Uh, what's I see that the Utah um, franchise is down to four names. It was the Glaziers, the the what's that? The one that I like. The the what's that? The not the Utes. The um, Yetis. The Yetis. Hopefully that's the name. They got Give Yeti, Mammoth, Glazers, and I can't remember what the other one is. Yeah, I can't think what the other one is. I tried to pull it up here, but hopefully they'll they'll. They'll talk to the fans. It's the Yeti. Well, that's who's choosing it. They have like a um, a survey. Yes, okay. the, fans, the fans can vote for. I, I just think the Yetis would all be awesome because you could pull that. Um, what was it the the Christmas story one where the the dentist pulls out all the the, the, <laughs> the dude's teeth, or the monster that they're all afraid of. Yeah, but that, but that is their logo. I think that'd be awesome. Uh, hmm. Uh, you talk about the Rudolph Rain, the Rudolph. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I didn't see that. I gotta check it. Yeah, good job, Dan. Good job, Dan. Uh, D Dub, we got less than 12 minutes. What's I, know, I know we're talking about hockey, uh, but oh, yeah, what are the sports chases? And something significantly happened yesterday. Take it away, hey man. We got uh, yes, it's you know, uh, the WNBA, which you know, I wasn't a big fan of back in the day. I used to watch it and I stopped watching it, and you know, because it just wasn't you know, good wasn't good so moving on yesterday i you know it's this caitlin clark and angel reese this big you know they had a nerve they put it on at 12 o'clock noon yep so high noon, high noon kids is up everybody's up watching then did your early morning whatever you had to do going to the ball game and this is actually a pretty good game uh yep uh indiana fever actually won 71 70 uh good game but in the game you had a hard foul by Shinetti what's your Shinetti Shinetti Carter and it Kennedy Carter Kennedy oh, it should go Kennedy okay yeah, go, go oh, last Kennedy H okay See, yes. Kennedy Carter yes it should be familiar to you yes Kennedy <laughs> Carter <laughs> that's Did a, like a, a check to Miss uh Caitlin Clark right all right at first for my eyes it looked like 
I was like, okay, maybe a little acting job by Clark. But then I'm like, then they showed the replay again. And I'm like, oh, this is intentional. And then you show it again. And you're like, oh, yeah, she, was, she wasn't even looking at the, the ball. She wasn't, you know, ready for the ball. And then it showed another replay of, of Angel Reese hugging Kennedy um, Carter as they was going to the bench. And then I'm like, yeah, this is this is definitely, you know, she meant to do that, and it was on purpose. Now the league came back, as I'm reading early this morning, the league came back and upgraded a foul so a that was committed, yes, to a flagrant one, yes, which was it should have been that on a on a on from the get go, correct. So you know you got all this 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 going on, then you got Angel Reese. Well, first of all, Teresa Witherspoon stop kennedy carter from answering any more questions no well first let me back up she refused to answer any questions about questions yeah caitlin clark right so here we go so you already know there's something there's something going on here within internally within the league there's something else going on right Ter teresa witherspoon says she shut it all down we're not answering the questions blah 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 uh angel reese she got fined a thousand dollars for not showing up to the media to you know because you know you do this thing. See, here's the thing with these girls, right? They ask for all this stuff, and now you got the media. Now you shine away from the media, right? Mm -hmm. This this mm -hmm. this makes no sense. You want eyes, you want all this stuff, but then now you don't want to deal with it. Deal with it, right? So, you know, like I said, man, this has been from the from the jump this has been a big old pile of gumbo mixed up with you know white black women petty petty women and not seeing and always and the, these girls wanted to be first not seeing and the bigger picture not seeing the bigger picture and then, right. then the girl kennedy carter making the comments all she do is shoot threes she doesn't add nothing else and i'm like what I said, holy do shit. You say that holy. About, do you say that about Curry? You, Kev, this is a song that we have to ask these ladies. <laughs> do you say that about Steph Curry? So, you know, again, we I'm not gonna shy away from this shit. We know it's it's is a is you know, this it's is tough. America, it's a it's just a lot of stuff involved with this shit, and it's it's not right. And here's the thing, y'all gonna mess around. And this girl either says, you know what? I don't need this shit. I'm done. I'm done. After her first contract. Yep. Yeah. I don't need this. Or somebody's going to hurt her. And I said that within our group chat. I right. said, somebody's said going that. to hurt her. And I gave in one of these Yahoos, I guess. Hey, shout out to all the haters. I, uh, we keep yeah, the we hate love them. Keep, keep, keep the hate coming. Keep, on hollering. Yeah. keep the hate coming. Because we're talking about it again. Yes. After hockey. Yes. Yes. Listen, I think I even explained. I says, and Dan's right here. Dan's the hockey resident expert. Even in hockey, Dan, what did you say before we, we got on the air about well, checking somebody? So, it, like, if you're going to check somebody, one, they either have to have the puck or just got rid of the puck. So it has to be in the vicinity. And Correct. two, you can't hit somebody from behind. You have to at least hit them from the side where they can see you. Mm -hmm. You can't, like, if you see numbers, you can't hit them. And look, I'm not going to paint, paint this that, that Kenny Carter is, is is the complete bad person in this whole entire situation. No, has, I watched the game, and I believe it was the trip up before that. They, I think Caitlin dished one inside, and and they scored or whatever. And, you know, they, they their new thing is, hey, we're going to trash talk. That's what we do. Well, apparently she can't handle trash talk because Caitlin had absolutely said something to her. Yes. After after she made the pass, and you could see that she, that pissed her that girl off. And then when they came down the other end, like you could almost see that she was still seeing red from the trip up the floor, because <laughs> she was standing there, and like she was like ten feet from her, and then she was like, you just seen like the wires go e e and then cross, and she just poof, ran up behind her and like hip checked her in the back. And I was right. like, I'm like, what the which, fuck is this? Which is a sucker move. And you know what? Indiana Fever, 
Y'all need Yo. to get an enforcer like like Charles Oakley, and I hate to say it, somebody like Damon, Draymond Green. Hey, Kev, but well, where are they? I mean, they're letting their teammate get abused. That That's never supposed to happen. Y'all are supposed to stand up and stand up for the girl, whoever's on your team. I don't even care if you don't like her. Dan is, Dan is on here again. Dan, anytime somebody's in the crease in hockey and they're whacking away at the goalie, What's going to happen to that player in the crease? Oh, they're going to get mugged. <laughs> <laughs> like they're going to get gloves in their face. They're going to get a, a one around their neck, choking them, and they're probably going to get taken to the ground. I, I mean, and I'm not here again. I'm not trying to say poor old Caitlin. This is no, not about poor old Caitlin. No, no, we no. Are, we, are, we are talking about. We love the physicality. This is you talk about to a group of guys who love these basketball. Yes, we love physicality. That's part. Of, that was that was part. That was part of the game. It used to be part of the game in the NBA and uh, NFL as well. We love that. Now there's there's crossing the line. There's what things that we call cheap art, cheap artists, cheap, cheap shots. shots. Yep, that was clearly a, a cheap shot. So you know, so the, so for the ones that's going to say, oh, you know, poor, no, it's not a nope, nope. Kate We're is the victim. The victim, nope, nope. It's not about that. So stop it. Nope. If you're going to play the game, ball. let's play the game right. Yeah, if you're going to hit her, let her get at the ball and face you. Yeah. And then and then run into her. You know yeah. what I'm she's, going up the middle. she's going up the middle with the, with the basketball? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Whack the shit out of her. That, that, I mean, just like, to me, it's it's cowardly to hit somebody when they're not looking. Like, I, the point I made yesterday, Kev, I said, does this happen to Steph Curry? Do you think Draymond Green is allowing that to happen? You think Bill Lambert is allowing the man I, Zeke to get hit up like that? Mike Jordan, he came back. He's like, oh no, he had Oakley. They had people and forces to help along your young guy, your young player, or whoever it is, your star player. And Dan, Dan, shame on Indiana, right, for not. That coach for not have telling these players, these girls, that that's that's your player, that's your that's your yeah. sister. Take care. Of Take her. Dan even brought up Tom Wilson for the Caps. Mm -hmm. The saying, you know, you can go on and on you about. Can go it. on and on. You could any sport. You you could go sport. on even and on. even in baseball, which I don't like now because the pitcher doesn't hit no more. Mm -hmm. When the National League, you go ahead and try that stuff prior to the DH. It, yeah, you're getting beamed. Yeah, you're gonna come <laughs> up. You gotta hit, but now it's a sucker move now because the pitchers and both mm -hmm. leagues they don't hit. So I think baseball. I don't know how they how they correct this, man. But we're but, definitely gonna get into more of this on Thursday. But hey, if something happens again, we'll show up on here because we got to go. We're under. We want to keep this underneath an hour for algorithm yeah. sake. This has been a great show. Dan no is doubt. always the man with the hockey man, but. Uh, oh, I made a ball. Look at that. Uh, hey, Kev, uh, I'll get back to Deontay Wilder. Please. Oh, yeah. Please hang it up, sir. Please. Yeah. <laughs> Please. I'm begging you, man. Just you, You're not the same. God bless you. You had a, a, a hell of a run, but it's, it's, it's time to wrap it up. It's over for Deontay Wilder. It's, it's over. Not not even on old, you know, I got jokes type shit. That's just, 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 I'm just, just looking out for you. Yeah, don't you get hurt. Good, yeah, don't get hurt. You had a good run. It's time, you know, it's time to hang it up. On behalf of myself, I'm Kevin O'Warren, your host and moderator for Dan the Hockey Dude, for Dow D-Dubs Warren, and for the rest of the crew, man. Yo, this is the Sports Chasers Podcast. Be good, be great. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. We'll talk to y'all later. Peace. That's a wrap for today's episode of the Sports Chasers Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms and connect with us on all social media channels for exclusive content and updates. We'd also love for you to join the conversation, share your thoughts, and become part of the Sports Chasers community. And remember to tune in next time for some more real sports talk. Until then, stay frosty.